Hello, and welcome to Game Gems. Today, we're going to revisit a topic I covered previously, that being how to create 3D cards using viewports. If you haven't watched my prior video, link in the description below, you should probably go do so before watching this one, and I'm totally not saying that to just pad my watch hours. I mean it. This one probably won't make sense if you don't. First, a quick overview of the issue at hand. We're creating 3D cards to use in a card game, and we want to be able to use Godot's UI nodes to lay out the card face. UI nodes are inherently 2D, though, so we take advantage of the fact that 2D surfaces are textures, and viewports render whatever's inside them to those same textures. Therefore, we can use a viewport's texture as a 3D object's material, and voila, 3D card. As you may have guessed, though, attaching a viewport to every newly spawned 3D object you create is going to send your frame rate into the toilet. Rather than just bite the bullet and use 2D cards like everyone else with any sense, though, I'm going to see if there's any way for me to optimize this process such that it uses less memory and provides better performance. While I may still have some work ahead of me, I did make some improvements, so let's get started. In order to fix this issue, ultimately, we need to get rid of the viewport. Viewports consume a lot of resources, and let's face it, once we render our card, we don't ever have to render it again because the image will never change, so we only really need the viewport to create the initial texture. This brings us to the first and most fundamental rule of performance optimization. Don't repeat yourself unnecessarily. So let's create a card spawner that'll solve all of our woes. I created an autoload, aka a global in 4.3, to cache everything and dole it out as needed. Cards are defined by their card data resource file and the texture rendered from that resource file as spelled out in my previous video, so we'll need to store both of those in the cache. Since a card resource is uniquely identified by its resource file name, we'll create two dictionaries in the cache, one for the data and one for the texture, each keyed to that file name. We also need a reference to our card object, which is what will instantiate each time we need a new card. We preload that as a packed resource and stick it in a variable to serve as a prefab. Next, we have to load all of our card data resource files. The way I'm doing it here is a total hack. In the non-prototype version of the game, I'm going to replace the explicit list of file names with a loop that scans the directory and automatically loads all the files within it. Another option is to use an enum and then assign the enum to uh, the file names or somehow parse the enum names, but that's a topic for another time. Regardless of how it's done though, each loaded resource file is inserted into the data cache directory, again, keyed to its file name. The texture cache is more interesting. Basically, whenever we render a new card face texture, we want to store it here. When the node is required to spawn a card, it will check the texture cache to see if the texture has already been rendered. If it has, then it will already exist under the relevant key so we can just serve it up as part of the card spawn. We'll see how that works in a moment. If not, then we can render it, cache it, and then assign it to the newly spawned card. It's not as easy as it sounds though. Let's see why. Here's the code to assign all the data from the card's resource file to the relevant UI elements in the template. Since the card object itself has a viewport, which has this template as a child, Godot's rendering engine will queue this object to be rendered on the next pass. The first problem is that each of these card objects share a material, but we don't want that. Any changes to the single card's material will be propagated across every card in the game. Thus, we have to make sure local to scene is checked on the front mesh's material properties. This isn't any different from the old version, but it's pretty important so it bears repeating. The second problem is that this render call won't happen until the end of the frame, which means the rest of the code in a script will have finished running before there's a usable texture available, which means our card face will be blank if we attempt to assign it to the front face material as part of this block of code. So we need to stick an await call in there. Specifically, we need to wait for the rendering server's frame post draw signal to fire, which means all updates to the relevant scenes have been rendered. Once this happens, we can grab the texture of the newly rendered viewport and assign it to the front face's material, right? Wrong. <laughs> Since Godot passes objects by reference, it's assigning a pointer to the existing viewport texture to the material, not duplicating the texture explicitly. This means that when we destroy the viewport, the texture will go away as well because it's part of the viewport. As a result, we need to convert the texture to an image, and then, because materials take image textures, not viewport textures, lay, we need to create a new image texture from that image. Then, and only then, can we assign the copy of the rendered texture to the material. Whew! And of course, the last thing we do is call Q free on the viewport since we don't need it anymore. Here's the third and final problem though. None of this code will actually update our card spawner cache because any code that runs after the card data is assigned but before it's rendered, which is the rest of the code in our spawn routine, will not be able to access the texture so we can't cache it. Man, if it ain't one thing, it's another, am I right? How the heck do we solve this? We use a signal. I define a signal that gets fired after the await to indicate that the texture has been rendered and pass the original data and newly rendered texture as arguments. 
I then connect the card spawner to that signal when the card is first created. The method that that signal calls when fired updates the image cache, which then fires a signal of its own to let all of the existing cards know that there's a new image available. Each card can then check to see if the image ID, that is the resource file name of the type of card the image is for, matches the ID of the card. If it does, the card grabs the image and sets its front face material to that image. If this didn't happen, then when we spawned a bunch of the same card at once, only the first one would actually have the correct texture because the others would be cloned from the initial spawn before the rendering server finished creating it. And speaking of cloning cards, let's see how that's done. Fortunately, it's a lot simpler than spawning new ones. We'll need a third cache in our spawner, one for the card objects themselves. When the card is spawned, it's added to this cache under the correct key. To clone a previously cached card, we simply grab the card out of the cache and call its duplicate method. We then null out the material's albedo texture because we're going to replace it with the one from the cache. If it already exists in the cache, we assign it to the front face. If it doesn't, we connect to the signal that fires when the cache updates so that it can get the correct texture when it's ready. Now, all we have to do to spawn a card is call the spawn card method of our card spawner with the relevant ID, and it will provide a correctly rendered card. More importantly, multiple instances of that card will all use the same texture object, greatly reducing the amount of memory we consume, and since we're cloning previously spawned cards out of our cache, those cached instances already have their viewports removed, so we're not wasting resources by initializing new viewports only to immediately free them. The result? My prototype originally started dropping frames with around 10 cards on screen. After implementing this cache process, my frame rate stays steady until we start getting upwards of 30 or 40 cards, and my graphics card is old and sad. I presume on a more modern system, this won't even be a blip on the radar. The next step is to reduce the amount of texture memory being used. As you can see, my window is running at less than 720p, and I mentioned in my previous video that my card textures are about 600 by 600. There is no way they need to be that large, so I'm going to scale them down once I decide on the final resolution for my game. And there you have it. Got any other tips to optimize this code? Am I barking up the wrong tree entirely, or is there something super trivial I've overlooked? Leave your insights in the comments below. And as usual, don't forget to like and subscribe for more game gems. See you next time.